People who have had a stalker. How did you realize you were being stalked? Part 2. For more such content, please like and subscribe. Our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. Apologies for the length, but here we go. Mine was much different than most people's. I met mine at church, but found out later he had followed me there. Apparently, he lived a couple houses down from my ex-boyfriend, and this dude showed up at my church within a week of my breakup with my ex. He was always wearing an army jacket, so I thought he was a veteran struggling with severe PTSD by the way he would act, found out later that he actually had a developmental disorder and the army jacket had been his father's. He followed me around my church for a while, and I honestly didn't think much of it. He seemed harmless. My friends would always joke about it when they'd see him looking for me if he lost where I was. If I went to the bathroom, he'd be standing outside the door when I came out. This went on for a couple years. We were always really nice to him, dumb on our part, but we didn't know any better. And we would invite him to our cookouts and hangouts, cause he could drive and stuff. One night I was at my friend's house having a girl's night. Her husband and our other friend went out so we could be alone. This dude showed up at the front door of my friend's house at midnight holding a weed whacker. Seriously, can't make this up. When I asked him what he was doing there, he said, Can I weed? Eat the backyard. I was super confused because, again, it was the middle of the night and my friend lived on a big lot, so it was pitch black outside. We told him no and asked him to leave, so he did. A couple weeks later, my friend and I were sitting with him in our church auditorium. It was just the three of us in there while we were waiting for my friend's husband to get out of a meeting. My friend said she needed to use the bathroom, and so she left me alone with him. I didn't really think anything of it. He'd never tried anything before, other than be a little too much in my space, so I thought it would be fine for a couple minutes. First thing he does is tell me that I look tense. I was like, oh, I'm fine. Trying to hide that fact that I was uncomfortable with him saying that, he proceeded to get up, stand behind me, and place his hands on my shoulders to massage them. I was still trying to be nice at this point by saying, no, I'm okay, thanks, please stop. That was when he started really apply pressure and I started to panic. So I struggled to get out of his grip, but the more I struggled, the harder he grabbed onto my shoulders and it hurt so bad. My friend came back at just the right time and yelled at him before ripping him off of me. She started screaming at him and he left angry. We didn't see him or hear of him again. After that, not until my friend called me a couple years later, telling me the guy had been arrested. I asked for the story and my friend sent me a link to an article. It said that the dude had been arrested for stabbing his neighbor's dogs to death. I think only one actually died, but the second one almost died. He was suspected of multiple other dog deaths in his neighborhood. He had gotten arrested, bonded out, got put on an ankle monitor, didn't charge it, went off the grid for six hours. And when they found him, they said that they found mutilated cats, raccoons, and possums in the surrounding block around his house. The article also said he had allegedly set fire to a previous girl's house when she rejected him, and another girl he threatened to kill her whole family. I feel like my situation with him wasn't near as bad as those other girls, but I'm still so glad that he's in prison now. They won't let him out early because they said he's a danger to society. TLDR, followed by someone for years, nearly assaulted, dude gets arrested for being an animal mutilator. Account 2. He offered to bring me home after the club. I thought it was nice. But then he knew where I lived. For the next three months, he was always there when I left my house. He was suddenly on the campus when he studied somewhere else. A few times a week, he would be standing and waiting in front of my door, asking the neighbors for my spare keys because he was my boyfriend and he locked himself out. Fortunately, they didn't believe him. He left letters, roses, coffee, and one day a knife. A lot of times when he was waiting in front of my door, I would be sitting in my apartment in silence. Hoping that he didn't hear me and would leave soon, he was sometimes there until 3 a.m. I, of course, blocked him from the beginning. Told him many times to leave. He said that he could hear our babies and I would rob us of our future together. I talked to the police. They couldn't do anything because he didn't broke a law. 
One day he called from a different number. My friend picked up and just screamed at him to leave me alone. And then he did. He wasn't in front of my door anymore. Not on campus. Not in the supermarket. Just gone. But still today I get panic attacks if I see a man with his body time and brown curly hair in the corner of my eye. Count three. My mom had an ex who left her for his ex-wife because his kids weren't handling the divorce well. At least that's what he told us. He would call my mom all the time, knock on the door, timed when the dog would be let out to know when to show up, leave love letters on my mom's car at work. My mom got a restraining order on him. That didn't stop there, though. Then his dad started to do all those things for him. Luckily, my mom was able to put one out on his dad as well. Then started seeing my stepdad. We moved in with him, they married, and she changed her name. Twelve YRs passed. Apparently, he went to prison briefly and got out. Somehow found out my mom got married, her new name, then started blowing her FB up. My mom took record of it and blocked him. On FB, he was more threatening her, but I'm pretty sure at this point if he came around, my stepdad could probably handle him. I know I could but they live several cities away and are super private, so I really don't think he'd be able to find them. Account 4. IDK if it's considered stalking, but this girl I was dating in high school's mom hired a private investigator to follow me around. When I went to meet her parents, her mom showed me pictures of me smoking cigars, buying beer, dipping, and even one of me working on my car. I ended up breaking up with her a few months later, but I still never understood why a grown-ass adult would hire a P.I. to follow around a 16-year-old. Account 5. There was this weird dude that used to call my house when I was 16. One day when my sister, 13, she answered the landline and heard a man start asking her questions about who she was, name and age, etc. My sister thought it was one of her friends messing around and didn't think much of it. Later that day, my mom got answered the phone to the same dude asking for the girl. He proceeded to call about 50 times a day from three different London landlines. He never a spoke to my sister after the first time, but always asked for hair. He was vulgar and threatening when my dad spoke to him. In the end, we had to pay to have all three of the numbers blocked for six months or so. The police didn't care. If I recall, it's because he was calling from hundreds of miles away. Even though I never spoke to him, it was just so unsettling hearing the phone ring so often. I think we unplugged it a lot of the time before getting him blocked. We have no idea who he was or why he harassed us like that. I imagine maybe he just spent all day calling numbers until people answered. Account 6. He used to be my friend and would attempt to call text or message me nonstop after I stopped being friends with him. He also claimed he had people who would keep an eye on me. I had to get a new phone number, block every fake account he created to get past other blocks and keep people who knew me in the loop about him. Finally, after threatening to kill me when everything came to a head, aka after I got sick of his weird obsessive behavior, followed by homophobic rants when I called him out on it, he managed to call me from another unknown number and threatened to kill himself if I didn't. Give him a chance. Yes. Romantically, despite him claiming to be straight. I blocked him again and I have no idea if he did what he claimed he would do or not. I don't want to know either. Count seven. I have been stalked by several guys. The scariest one was my ex. He would wait outside my apartment in his car. If I wasn't there, he was at my work waiting in the parking lot. He would call me at random times from random numbers. He would threaten my friends asking them what my location was. He would contact my friends through their social media since I didn't have any accounts. He threatened a neighbor of mine and almost broke my door down. My landlord ended my contract early because he feared for my safety. It got to the point that I thought he was going to kill me. Worst part of this, after two weeks of our breakup, he was already with someone else, so he was literally doing this while dating another person. It was three years of terror. Count eight. I woke up one morning and caught him peering in my window. I got police involved, and honestly, I think he just got more stealthy until he found someone else to obsess over. Account nine. I'm not sure if this is labeled as stalking, but it's a form of harassment. So when I, 18F, was 16, I started working at Walgreens. 
There was a customer who would come in the store and harass me while I would be trying to work. He was living in a halfway house, place where inmates go after prison, across from the Walgreens. He started coming in, and then it just kept getting worse and worse. First he kept coming in when I was working evening shift, and then when he noticed that I had been working morning shift, he started coming in in the morning. He never bought anything either. I think he only bought one thing in the beginning. He came into the store one day and yelled my name and just stared at me while I was ringing up a customer and I said hello. And then he says that he doesn't care about my attitude and that he's going to continue coming into the store. Another incident. He came into the store and just stood in my face for almost a minute just staring at me, which made me feel uncomfortable. Then I said something along the lines of, can I help you with something? And then he kept asking over and over again why I don't talk to him anymore. And his words were slurred like he was intoxicated or something. And he was leaning over the register. I don't have any personal relationships with any of the customers. I try to keep everything work-related when talking with customers. The only thing I've ever said to any customer was, Welcome to Walgreens and... Do you have a Walgreens card or have a nice day? So I'm not sure what he's talking about. Then he said, I am a grown woman, which I was not. I was 16 going on 17 at the time. He kept coming in every time I was scheduled. He kept asking why I don't talk to him anymore. I think there was one time he did buy a drink in the middle of him stalking me. I asked him if he has a Walgreens card or if he needs a bag and he ignored that and asks why I don't talk to him anymore. It was very, very frustrating. Customer seen him come in and yell things at me and asked, was I okay? He even asked a former employee about me, asking was I working that day. He kept causing scenes and he would always do it when I was on the register by myself. He never did it when I was around another co-worker, but he did harass me around customers, causing big scenes like we dated or something. The last incident, he came in, but a security guard, manager, and another employee were at the register having a conversation with me. He just walked a little down the aisle and left out ten seconds later. Mind you, this was over a course of about five months. I no longer work there. Account 10 it was my ex, we were also separated for a year. My friend and I were celebrating Galantines, Valentines, for friends, basically. She invited me to the restaurant she was working at. After her shift, we had some dinner and drinks, then we were going to a club nearby. She posted a story on Instagram and tagged my account. I didn't have my ex on my Instagram. But he followed my friend, which I didn't know. This is important to remember. We finished up and then went to the club where we met a mutual friend of ours. The evening progressed nicely, or so it seemed. Decided to take a break from dancing and went to the washroom where I checked my phone. From another account, my ex sent a video of me dancing saying, Is this you? You know, I know a lot of people and someone recognized you. I recognized those shoes. I was terrified. I calmly explained to my friends the situation and so we agreed to leave. I looked around the club as we left, and I didn't see him anywhere. We went back to the restaurant my friend worked at, told my friends everything was good and I just need to go home. My one friend left. The other called a taxi for me and waited with me. When the taxi arrived, we left the restaurant, and my ex was like, What's up? He literally was waiting outside the restaurant for me. Then, because my friend was a guy... He started a scene outside the restaurant yelling around, accusing me of cheating. I never cheated on him. He cheated on me, hence why I left. It was very embarrassing. The restaurant manager even came outside and had to intervene to prevent him from attacking my friend. I got home safe, and the next morning I filed a police report. Turned out he saw my friend's story, followed us from when we left the restaurant, came into the club, and took videos of me then proceeded to follow me back to the restaurant. Still gives me chills thinking about it. Account 11. When I was going to university, this one girl came on to me. I let her know I was not interested, but she didn't like that answer. She figured out my schedule, what car I drove, when and where I ate lunch, when I got to campus, and she sent me creepy messages like, I can't wait to run my fingers through your hair. I was really worried she was going to do something to me, but luckily she didn't. 
transferred to a technical institute at semester and never saw her again. Account 12. I lived about three blocks from the bus stop when I was in elementary school, and my mom would sometimes forget to pick me up so I'd just walk home. It was only two turns, so I knew the way and was used to the route from being on a bike with friends, so it wasn't a big deal to me. My house was considered part of the hood, so shady stuff went on, but there were lots of good folks on our street who would do yard work, so I was relatively safe to travel because of all the eyes. About halfway home, I noticed a white van, fucking cliche, parked on the street. Okay, no big deal, whatever. It's a car. Then when I reached my street, I noticed the van out of the corner of my eye was parked a few houses back from me. It was definitely the same van because I recognized the plate. That was a little weird and too weird for me to be comfortable. So I kept walking until I reached the house of someone who would let me take strawberries from their garden. Luckily, it was only two houses down from where I was standing, so I wasn't in any danger of getting grabbed. I made up a story of wanting to know more about their garden which was huge and filled their entire backyard with pathways and cobblestone and benches and shit, and they let me into their backyard. I ate some strawberries and peeked over the backyard fence to see the white van slowly go by where I was. Luckily, they couldn't see me, but I saw the driver, and they had a hat and sunglasses on and camera around their neck. I was a kid, so I didn't really react or comprehend the situation fully, just went home through the back. All of the backyards were separated, but if you climbed over the back fence, there was a space in between a really long fence that went down the entire street. I used that space a lot to travel around between my friends' houses and to just explore. It made for a great getaway. I did find out on the news that kids were being kidnapped, and the kidnapper had taken nude photos of all of them. They had found their hub, where they took the photos and had put them all over the walls. I don't know if they found the guy or not. It was about a dozen children all under 10. From then on, my older siblings would walk me to and from the bus stop when my mom didn't. Account 13. I've been stalked a few times, but I'll tell about one stalker. I used to play Tara all the time. Back when I was a freshman and sophomore in high school, I grew to have many online friends from the game, but grew close to the people in a 18. Guild I joined... The guild I was in was a fairly big guild at the time, so you eventually had little clicks here and there. Nothing new. There was one guy who was very off, though. Very, very off. I logged in one day and had near instantly received a whisper from him after I greeted everyone who was online. He said hello, that he was new, asked how my day was going, etc. And just general stuff. It got weird when he became insistent on role-playing. I declined every time on that day because I was very ill. I just wanted to play a little alone until I decided to sleep again. But every single day after that, he never stopped with pressuring me for role play. Not only that, he had a weird obsession with horses. Nothing wrong with liking horses, but I draw the line when it becomes weird, as in sexual. He would notice I would role play with others and not him, so he began to get demanding. Soon enough, I blocked him. At that time, when you blocked someone, it was just their character, and you'd see you blocked made-up name appear on your screen. But the person's other characters could still be seen, and they could talk to you through them. Basically, you had to block all characters, but you would know when they deleted a character you blocked BC. It would say you unblocked them. And that's what happened. I blocked this guy over and over, but he kept deleting his character, remaking new ones, coming back into the guild and finding me. Even my alt characters, he'd find me. Soon, he found my Steam, my Facebook, my Instagram. He kept trying to interact and talk to me for six months. I told my guild leader she did nothing. I reported the characters and accounts and kept blocking, but he kept coming back. Before he disappeared, he found what he thought was my address. It wasn't mine. It was in my town, but not my address. I was very careful about where I went after that for about another six months and got scared off Terra. Account 14. Had a stalker when I was about 16, 17 years old. They somehow got a hold of my number and would text me at all hours of the day. Sometimes just to let me know they knew when I had people over or tell me that I'm coming home awfully late. They would also tell me of all the other times they saw me throughout the day. I would block the number, 
and they would just keep using new numbers to text me on, I ended up filing a police report but never got anything out of it. Cops even had the nerve to joke around and say, it's because you're pretty. You should be flattered. Found out it was a childhood friend's father, posted him publicly on social media with photos that put things to an end. Account 15. He added me on MSN Messenger when I was 14 and pretended to be someone I knew. Eventually, he started slipping, like forgetting he gave me a fake name, and I got weirded out and stopped talking to him, eventually blocking him. He somehow got my mobile number when I was given one when I was 15, and even yelled at my father for answering one of his many calls and telling him to piss off. He then found me like 10 minutes after I created a MySpace profile a year later. I deleted it immediately because he had a photo, and he was way older than me. I made a new one a few months later, and he found me on that. He has subsequently found me on every social media I've ever had, except this one, so I just stopped using it. To my knowledge, I've never seen him in real life, but he knows shit about me. It's really weird. He has always acted like we've known each other and been close. Sometimes he messages and acts like we used to be together. From his social media that I could see without adding him, he seems to be now married with two kids. Yet he still finds me. I last got a message on Insta during lockdown from a fake profile he created. It's been half my life, almost. I always joke to friends that if I get murdered, tell the cops to look for the bald man named Joel. <laughs>